Well, howdy there, folks. Here we are again, another lab from the barn. Well, today what we're going to look at is lab 11 in your lab packet. This is covers something called Beer's Law. It has to do with the absorption of light. We're going to use this concept to do a little analysis game with you and analyze these three copper solutions I have back here. Now, the reason we chose copper is copper plus two nitrate makes a nice blue solution. The reason it appears to be blue, again, is because as white light passes through it, and you know white light is composed of all of the colors in uh, the visible spectrum from the short wavelength blue photons to the long wavelength red ones. As it passes through there, apparently only the blue photons manage to sneak all the way through. This is why it appears to your eye to be blue. That's because all the yellows and, and reds and oranges got swept out of there by the copper plus two ions. All right, so things appear to be the color they are because of the light that is not absorbed by them. The reason a blue sweater appears to be blue is because as white light impinges on it and is reflected, the yellows and the reds and the oranges were absorbed by the dye that made the sweater appear to be blue. Only the blue photons then were reflected. Same thing with our copper solution. Well, in 1852, August Beer figured out that, well, if this absorbs red photons, then the more copper plus two I put in there, it should absorb even more red photons. And if we could measure that amount of absorbance, that might be kind of a handy little relationship between the concentration of the ion and how much light it actually absorbs. All right, well, that's what our lab's about today. And the device we're gonna use is called a colorimeter. And essentially what we're gonna do is shoot a beam of red light through a sample of copper solutions. We're not gonna use much just a few milliliters in a little plastic cuvette. And this device essentially has a photo cell on one side that measures how much light comes out of the cuvette, and we're gonna measure how much light we're gonna shoot through it. All right, well, we can choose actually the wavelength of light we wanna shoot through, and we've chosen 635 nanometers. That's up in the red region of the spectrum. Copper absorbs pretty well there. All right, so this is kind of an interesting analysis method, and it involves Beer's Law the fact that there's a relationship between concentration and the absorption of light. But to really understand Beer's Law, let's do a little bit more uh, look into the theoretical aspects of Beer's Law. And to understand that, we really need to look at this analysis tool that we refer to as spectroscopy. All right, well, spectroscopy is essentially just the use of light as an analysis tool. The bottle I showed you earlier that contained copper nitrate appeared to be dark blue because as white light passes through it, all the red and yellow and orange gets absorbed by the solution and consequently only the blues and greens go through. As a matter of fact, I sketched out here the absorption spectrum for copper plus two and it shows how much light gets absorbed, absorbance here on the y-axis, and at different colors. So essentially if you were to take a light source that you could change the wavelength of the source and go from the blue end of the spectrum up to the red end of the spectrum, you'd see that copper does not absorb very much in the blue and green area of the spectrum, but it does absorb quite a bit in the yellow and the orange and the red. So consequently, the blue and green photons zip right on through, and that's why the solution appears to be blue when white light passes through it. Well, the fact that it absorbs so well here in the red area of the spectrum allows us to use that as a tool to figure out how many copper ions are in the paths of those photons. So if we shine a red light on a copper solution, the amount of light that gets absorbed is a function of how many copper ions are actually in the solution by molarity. All right, well, that's Beer's Law. Let me make a little room here and I'll show you. All right, in today's lab, what we're gonna do is measure the absorbance of light by a series of copper solutions. We're gonna use a small colorimeter to do that and the computer. We're gonna put our solutions in a small plastic cuvette, only holds a few milliliters of solution. And the, the colorimeter essentially measures the intensity of the light coming out of the cuvette when we shine a red light through the solution by measuring the current produced up by a little cadmium sulfide photocell over here on the output side of the cuvette. All right, well, in, in essence, then, the uh, percent transmittance, the amount of light that actually gets through, if we compared how much is coming out to, to how much is going in, that's called the percent transmittance. 
the intensity out my, divided by the intensity in times 100%. And the more copper ions that are in there, you can understand that percent transmittance starts to get lower and lower and lower. If there's a lot of copper ions in there, then it's going to absorb a lot more of that red light. And consequently, the intensity of the light coming out is going to decrease. As a matter of fact, if we were to make a graph, here's what it would look like. All right, well, if we were to make a plot then of the percent transmittance of light through solutions of copper versus how much copper is actually in there, you can understand that if we were down here at zero molarity, and a reminder, molarity is the number of moles of copper plus two per liter. If we were down here at zero coppers in there, the light would just pass right on through and we'd have 100% transmittance. On the other hand, as the copper molarity were to increase, if we put stronger and stronger solutions in that small cubette, the percent transmittance would fall off in a logarithmic curve that becomes asymptotic with the x-axis. Now you think, well, then we could use this as an analysis tool, because if I were to take, say, an unknown solution of copper ions and measure its percent transmittance, if I know this is the relationship I could just simply look on, on the graph and see, well, here's the molarity of that unknown copper solution that has this percent transmittance. Well, the problem with that is up here where it starts to get asymptotic with the x-axis, it wouldn't be very accurate to do this kind of a, a set of crosshairs to figure out the molarity of an unknown copper because you can understand that a big swing in molarity would be represented by a very small change in percent transmittance. So it really wouldn't be very accurate up here where it's asymptotic with the x-axis. And this is where Beer's Law comes in. So let me make a little bit of room and I'll show you. Okay, what Beer did was he said, you know, that logarithmic curve that's created when you plot percent transmittance versus the molarity of whatever your absorbing species is, he says, yeah, it's not very usable up there where it, it comes at the beginning and at the very end where it's asymptotic. It only works kind of in the middle of the range for analysis. He said, but if we were to just look at the inverse of that, let's not look at it as transmittance. Let's look at it as absorbance. And let's define absorbance as the logarithm of the inverse of percent T. Notice since I'm leaving percent T as a percent and not as a decimal, then I'm using 100% on the top and whatever the percent transmittance is on the bottom. So if it was 50%, I would put 50 in there. And that would be the log of two. That would define the absorbance. Well, it turns out that when you plot the absorbance of light by the copper solution versus its molarity, you understand at zero molarity now, there would be zero absorbance because it would be 100% transmittance and the logarithm of one is zero. So this graph would start at the origin. And it turns out that there's a linear relationship between absorbance and the molarity of the copper. This makes for very good analysis because now at pretty much any molarity here, even up in the high range where percent transmittance would not be very accurate, we can get a very accurate read on the absorbance of an unknown and its corresponding molarity. So what we're going to have you do then is measure the absorbance of five different copper solutions. And we're going to make physically make a paper graph of those absorbances. We get a really nice straight line. And I'm going to read the absorbances of three unknown copper solutions. And here's what I'm going to have you do on a piece of paper and I'm sending you the graph paper with the axes all, all labeled. All you need to do is draw a set of crosshairs at the absorbances of each of the three unknowns. And eyeball for me what you think their corresponding molarities are. All right, well, let me explain a little bit more in depth about Beer's Law and why this turns out to be a linear relationship. All right, well, here's Beer's Law in a nutshell. Remember that Beer just established that we should use absorbance as our analysis tool since it was linear with concentration as opposed to percent transmittance 
which looked like that logarithmic curve. Well, the basis of his idea was this. He said that absorbance was actually made up of three components. What he called first the molar absorptivity, A, of the substance, and that would be unique to each species. That's how much does it absorb in terms of light intensity per mole of that substance. That's its molar absorptivity. And again, if you're looking at the same species all the time, that molar absorptivity doesn't change. So today we're going to look at copper in each one of our solutions. So this is going to be a constant number in our case. Well, he said three components, A, B, and C. B, the second term, he referred to as the path length through which the light has to pass when it's being absorbed. In our case, that would be the distance across one of those little one centimeter cuvettes. Well, again, we're going to use that same plastic cuvette for each analysis. So that number is not going to change. It's constant. The only other thing then that affects absorbance is the concentration of the absorbed species. All right, well, if everything out here is going to be constant, that means then that absorbance, sure enough, is directly proportional to the concentration. They would be linear with one another. All right, well, let's make a quick graph. Okay, so like I mentioned before, if we plot the absorbance of our copper solutions versus their molarities, it should come out a straight line. And again, this is because of Beer's law when he defined absorbance as the logarithm of 100 over the percent t, essentially we find then that that's a linear relationship with the molarity of our copper solutions. Now when I used to work for daily laboratories, we used to run analyses like this all the time. It turned out there's a lot of things that, that absorb light in the visible region of the spectrum, and if they don't, you can react them with something that might cause them to form a complex that does absorb somewhere in the visible region of the spectrum. And so when I was working at Daily Laboratories, every morning I used to run cyanide analysis, and I'd come in and make up five known molarities of cyanide solution. Well, it turned out it absorbed in a certain region of the spectrum, and so we would shine that wavelength of light through the cyanide samples, and we would make up in the morning a paper graph. This is before the computers were there to do this for us. I would make up a paper graph of the absorbance of those solutions. And our colorimeter was a little bit more elaborate than the one we're using today, but basically the same idea. I would plot their absorbance versus the molarity of the cyanide. And I would literally just make a paper graph. Then I would run several hundred unknown samples and simply read their absorbance on my machine look on my graph and see what the corresponding molarity would be. Every morning I had to come in and make up fresh standards and run what was called my working curve because again the machines would drift a little bit from day to day and the cyanide solutions wouldn't keep overnight. So in essence you had to do this every morning. Well we're going to have you do exactly the same thing. Make up five standards of copper, we're going to measure their absorbance, we're going to measure then the absorbance of three unknowns, and find out what their molarities are. Sorry if I repeated myself there, but let me show you quickly how we're going to make up the standards. Okay, essentially this is how I used to make up my standards in the morning. I take five test tubes. We're going to have you put our stock solution in this first test tube. Actually, I'm going to do this for you anyway. And fill that about two-thirds full of 0.125 molar copper nitrate solution. So 0.125 molar in copper there. I'm going to start with five mils of distilled water in the other four test tubes, and then I'm going to pipette a five mil sample of my stock solution into the second tube. Well, that cuts it in half then, essentially with the water, makes it exactly half of this concentration in the next tube. So instead of being 0.125, it would be 0.0625. All right, well, then I'm going to mix that up real well and take five mils of that and put it in the next test tube. Well, that cuts that in half, and sure enough, now this is going to be half of the one before it. So you just keep cutting it in half, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625, 0 0.03125, I forget. Just cut them in half and go all the way down the, the line. Okay, so we'll take five mils all the way down here, and I'll show you on the report sheet where we have to put down these molarities. Then we're going to pour each one of these solutions. And just a technique tip here. I always go from the most dilute to the strongest. 
because as I'm filling the cuvette, a lot of times there might be a little residual liquid from the previous sample. I'd rather, if I'm going to contaminate my sample, I'd rather contaminate it with the one that was more dilute than the one that was more concentrated. So I always go in this direction. I start with my most dilute, work my way back toward the most concentrated. It just seems to work better that way. All right, well then we're gonna pour each one of these solutions, starting with the most dilute, into our cuvette, and we're gonna have the computer then read the percent transmittance and the absorbance. We're gonna transfer those numbers then to our report sheet, and in addition, I'm gonna read the absorbance and transmittance of the three unknown solutions that we want you to put on your graph. All right, well, let's jump into the lab. Let's actually do this. We'll get some numbers and then we'll come back and take a look at them. All right, well, let's make some standards then. Uh, I'm starting off with our stock solution of 0.125 molar copper and two nitrate. And I got about two thirds of a test tube full here. And as I mentioned at the board, I'm going to put five milliliters of distilled water in each of these other four test tubes. I'll fast forward here. You don't have to watch me pipe that. All right, so I put five milliliters of distilled water in each of these other four test tubes. Now, in order to make my standards, what I wanna do is introduce five milliliters of the stock solution into the next test tube. This essentially is gonna cut it in half with water, make it exactly half the concentration it was. Remember, it was 0.125 molar. This is gonna make the second test tube 0.0625 molar. I'll let that drain. Now I'm going to continue down the line. Now normally we would have you get in here with a mix, a stirring rod and stir that up. I'm going to use the tip of the pipette and stir it up a little bit. Because now I want to take five milliliters of that solution and take it to the next test tube. Now you understand the blue color is going to get more and more faint as we continue down the line because each time it gets half the concentration. So now we were down from 0.125 to 0.0625 to half of that, and we'll go to half of that and to half of that. We'll write down these molarities on our report sheet. Now again, I'm gonna mix that up pretty well. Take five milliliters of this solution. into the next two. And I think you can even see here on the video that these are getting fainter and fainter as we go down the line. The molarity of that last one is very, very low. And this is what I like about this analysis method, is not only is its detection limit good, meaning it can spot a copper ion at very, very low concentration, but the wavelengths that we're using is pretty specific to anything that would be blue in color. And copper is kind of unique, is that it's one of those cations that appears to be blue. So this is a very selective way to look at a sample. Uh, meaning that if there were other ions present in here, this analysis shooting red light through the, there would not detect any of them. It would only detect the copper. All right, well, I'm gonna do the last one. And so voila, we have our five standards. I'm gonna hold them up to the camera so you can see them a little bit better. You can see then that starting off with our darkest blue here for the 0.125 molar, they got fainter and fainter and fainter as we went. All right, well, let me pause the, the film here and get set up, and we'll do the reading of the absorbance. Okay, well, here we go, measuring the absorbances of our standard solutions, and then we'll measure the absorbances of our unknowns. 
Now I've got Logger Pro open here on my laptop and clearly you don't may not have the software at home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to holler out the percent transmittances and then we'll fade to the report sheet and add them on as we go. All right, and then I'm going to have you calculate the absorbances because since you don't have the graphing portion of the software, I'm going to have you make a physical graph and take a picture of it and send it in to me. All right, well, the first thing we have to do when we're measuring absorbances is to measure what's called a blank. The pre-lab asked you about the blank. The blank basically is the cuvette filled with everything else except the copper. Well, in this case, all the, all that's there except the copper is water. So I filled it with distilled water because water has some absorption uh, capabilities. And so we have to at least in our blank include all the constituents except the thing that we're looking for. So the cuvette and the water. That way, any change in the absorbance of the sample is due to that thing that we're looking for. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And again, this should be 100% transmittance. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my calibration button here. And it'll calibrate the machine and set that reading, what's going through the distilled water right now, to be 100% transmittance. So that will be our first data point. Let's go ahead and fade to the report sheet and we'll put that in. Okay, well here's our first molarity was zero. And since we calibrated our colorimeter, that first percent transmittance was 100, which would calculate out to an absorbance of zero. Remember that absorbance is the logarithm of 100 over the percent transmittance. Now I've calculated for you here the molarity since we're gonna start at our most dilute sample. I went ahead and started down here at the bottom with 0.125 molar, our stock solution. I cut it in half to 0 0.0625, half again to 0 0.0313, half again to 0 0.0156, and our most dilute sample at 0 0.00781. All right, well, let's go get a reading and we'll put it down here on the report sheet. Okay, well, let's read our, our most dilute sample then. So I'm going to fill the cuvette with my most dilute sample. Put it in the colorimeter, close the lid. And in this case, the percent transmittance seems to be hovering around 71.69%. Well, I'm sorry, it's settling in. Let me just let it settle for just a second. It's dwindling ever so slightly as the machine is warming up a little bit for us. We're really only good to three significant figures here, and it seems to be hovering around now at 71.3%. We'll take that one. So 71.3%. Let's fade to our report sheet, and we'll put this in for, for our most dilute sample. Okay, well, our reading for our most dilute sample then was 71 0.3%. Now again, use that to calculate the corresponding absorbance of that solution. All right, well, let's move on to the next sample then. Now we'd anticipate as these solutions get darker that it should, per the percent transmittance should drop. And it does. It seems to be hovering now around 50.9. I'm going to let it settle in a little bit. So 50 point, uh, it's down to 50.7. We'll let it kind of level off. What you're seeing on the screen here, I don't know if you can make it out, is the absorbance. It actually, the absorbance went up as the transmittance went down. Again, they are inverses of one another. All right, so it seems to have settled in now at about 50.5%. All right, well, let's fade to our report sheet, put this in, we'll come back and do the next one. Okay, well, here's our next solution. Came in at 50.5%. Again, that was the 0 0.0156 molar. Notice that it's getting stronger, and sure enough, the percent transmittance is falling off. 
Okay, here we go for the next one. This is third from the most dilute. Put it in the colorimeter. And oh yeah, the percent transmittance is definitely dropping now. The absorbance is going up. It appears to be hovering around 29.6%. And again, as these get darker and darker, the percent transmittance has fallen off exponentially. And it seems to be leveling off at 29.5%. All right, well, let's fade to our report sheet. We'll put that in. We'll come right back. Okay, this sample came in at 29.5%. Again, the logarithm of 100 over that 29.5 will give you the absorbance. Note that I put up here that we're going to plot the absorbances on the y-axis, molarities on the x-axis. Okay, here we go, next sample. Now this is the next to the most concentrated and the percent transmittance is really dropping at this point. It's down to about a 9.4%. Again, we're using a 635 nanometer wavelength uh, light to shoot through there. Because that's nice in the red region of the spectrum. So it absorbs pretty well. All right, it appears to be down to about 9.4%. Well, we've got one last sample to do. Let's fade to the report sheet, put this number in. We'll come right back. Okay, our 0 0.0625 molar solution came in at 9. I said 9.4, but I went back and read it more carefully. It was 9.42%. I wanted three significant figures. Okay, here we go. Last sample. Our percent transmittance should pretty much fall off to almost zero at this point. The absorbance is getting up there pretty high. When you calculate it, you'll find that it's above two, just slightly above two. And our percent transmittance has fallen off to about, oh, 0.80%. Yeah, let's put in, uh, actually, it's more like 0.79%. All right, well, let's fade to our, uh, our report sheet and input that. Okay, and our last most concentrated stock solution, 0.79%. All right, time to calculate all your absorbances then. All right, now at, at this point, I'm gonna fade out. I wanna, now that we've established all the transmittances and you're calculating the absorbances for each of these known samples, let's prepare now and we'll measure the absorbances, I'm sorry, the percent transmittances of our three unknowns. Okay, well, here we go measuring our unknowns. Got my cuvette ready to go. Now, I remember I said we've got three unknowns for you to look at. I've got a number back here, one, two, and three. They have varying intensities of blue color, which indicates different molarities of copper. So let me start with number one here. I'll just put enough in. So it'll fill the cuvette about two thirds full. Put it in the colorimeter. And it appears to have a percent transmittance of about 
10.4% to three significant figures. All right, well, let's do our next one. Now, unknown number two. And number two seems to be settling in. Looks about to be about 2.31%. 2.31%. We'll go to three significant figures here. All right, well, let's get number three done. Rinse. Fill our cubette with number three. Number three looks pretty dilute. Probably have a pretty high percent transmittance, but there's not much copper in it. And it appears that number three. has an absorbance, or I'm sorry, a percent transmittance. Oh, let's call it 29.9%. That's pretty high. That's good to three significant figures. All right, well, let's put those three on our, uh, our report sheet, and then we'll come right back. All right, on your report sheet, since we have the computer calculating absorbances, but I'm going to have you do it, I'm just going to pencil in the percent transmittance over here next to the sample numbers. Sample number one came in at 10.4% transmittance. Let me put up here percent T. The second sample came in at 2.31% transmittance. And the third one came in at 29.9% transmittance. Now again, we want you to calculate the corresponding absorbances. We're going to eyeball these absorbances on our graph made with our known samples above and figure out the molarities of those three unknowns. Okay, so we've gotten all the percent transmittances then for our known solutions and our three unknowns. I want you to manually calculate. I'm sorry to give you all this legwork to do because normally the computer would do this for us. But I'd like you to calculate then the absorbances. And again, do it to three significant figures. Calculate the absorbances, which is the logarithm of 100% over whatever the percent transmittance was. And again, don't change the percents to decimals. Leave them as their full percent value. And calculate the absorbances then for all of our knowns and for our three unknowns. We're going to have you physically then plot that on the graph paper that I gave you. With the absorbances of the three unknowns, we should be able to guesstimate then what the molarities were of those three unknowns. Now don't forget to complete your report sheet. Please take a picture of it and your graph and the pre-lab and submit that by the deadline date. Okay, well now that we have the five absorbances for our five uh, known solutions of copper, again, I, I attached a piece of graph paper that already has the axes all labeled for you. Again, just I think I've got all the numbers there for you that you'll need to plot the molarities, and I've got the scale right. All right, so let's take our top absorbance and our top molarity. Remember, the top molarity was the 0 0.125 and plot all five of your data points. Remember the origin counts because of the fact that a zero molarity would have a zero absorbance. Now I'd like you to just take a ruler. Once you've got those five data points on there, take a ruler and lay it on the origin. And I want you to draw the best straight line fit that you can. And just eyeball it through those data points. If some are a little bit off, just make sure that you shoot right in between so that there's if there's any deviation, it appears to be equal on both sides of the line. Once you've drawn that line, then let's take the absorbances of our three unknowns, and I'd like you to take a pencil 
and mark where those three absorbances are and label the values here on your graph. Draw a set of crosshairs and again then indicate for me what the molarity is for each of those unknowns. Once you've got those drawn on the graph, make sure that you put those three molarities on your report sheet. You'll note there are no questions on this lab. We just simply wanted to show you how the spectrophotometers work and have you do a nice quick graph and a quick analysis of three unknowns. All right, now next week uh, for the quiz, I'd like you to know the definition of a blank, why we had to use the blank, the one that just had the distilled water in there. If you read through the lab text, there's a, a quick explanation of why it's necessary. And I'd like you to... Uh, be able to calculate an absorbance. So again, do the pre-lab because it too asks you about the blank and it asks you to calculate an absorbance. So the quiz is going to be very much like the pre-lab. So please make sure that you submit then your uh, report sheet for this one with the uh, molarities of the unknowns and uh, the pre-lab that goes with it. Now next week we are going to do exercise 12. This is on Lewis structures. And it's just a Tinker Toy Lab, so I can make the Tinker Toys for you, and I'll give you, you know, a reasonable explanation on how to draw Lewis structures next week. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for submitting all your papers so promptly. It really makes my life a lot easier. I appreciate it. I hope this isn't too painfully a way for you to do the labs. Again, if you have any problems, don't hesitate to email me or call me. All right, well, I'll see you next week. I'll bring my little Tinker Toy set. And we'll make some Tinker Toy models of a bunch of molecules. See you later.